five, four, three. Is your phone on silent? Mm, my phone is. Two. What's ever? Oh, I love you at. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Biz Talk, the show. I am Eric. Uh, I'm one of the random hosts occasionally, I think. I might get Dirk to host next. I am here with Dirk DaCosta today, and um, Dirk is actually a partner with us. And I met Dirk because he was tall. No joke. I walked up to him and I said, you're tall, you must be somebody I need to know. <laughs> and that's how Dirk and I met. And that's a true story. True story. And uh, our partnership formed. Um, Dirk has a company called ClickSuite, which he's going to tell us a little bit about. Um, and we use ClickSuite and we're building in a really good, solid collaboration, I think, right? We're collaborating and we're yeah, absolutely. banging Getting out a, ideas. A good amount of interaction between us and some very good suggestions. So, yeah, very yeah. productive partnership. So let's talk about before we jump into uh, uh, you know the mechanisms of partnerships. Let's talk about you. So you tell us about how you started the the brand. Sure. Um, so a little bit about me. I uh, I'm from the UK, born in London, been in the States for 20 years, but always uh, worked in technology, the technology space. That's my background primarily. Uh, my dream has always been to start my own business. But, you know, it wasn't something that I saw enough opportunity in my space to, to do something about. So um, it took me a, a little while to sort of uncover some uh, opportunities that I thought, yeah, I could do that. Um, and it's a, it's a funny story how ClickSuite really, I guess, started. Uh, Various people in in this location belong to what we call a, a private dining club. Uh, it's kind of a society. Um, and when I was invited to join over five years ago, I was told to mail in a check. So immediately I said, why are we mailing in checks when we have technology that can do a lot of this uh, kind of activity and save a lot of time and effort on both sides, not just for the dining club, but for the actual, you know, participants. So I didn't do anything about it five years ago. Uh, I had some conversations and thought, this is a good idea, but you know, am I really ready, really ready to do something about it? Uh, so I put it on the back burner for a couple of years and then Literally a couple of years ago, I decided I can do this. This is the time is right. I think this is a great opportunity. And then I went ahead and, and started to build this platform. Right. So, yeah. So the, um, it took you a few years to get there, which I really think is, is, is a good thing to just, you know, talk about a little bit. Because, again, you have a lot of businesses out there. Um, and, and, and they just like, oh, first idea, I'm going to run with it. And then like fail. Mm. You know, like within the first few months because they really didn't, I guess, think it out or the timing wasn't right. So what drove you to sort of really be looking for that timing? Like what was, was it a gut feeling? Were you watching and waiting and sort of building? So tell, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think it was a bunch of different reasons. One is I wanted to really feel out the market a little bit. I wanted to do some research when I had time. So... I spent, you know, it might sound like a long time, a couple of years, and it is, because everybody's got their day jobs, right? It, it takes time and, you know, energy to, to, <laughs> to invest in building a company. I didn't feel I had the time or the energy. Even the financial resources, you know, was not there at the time for me to really take it seriously because, you know, really, you know, the, nothing gets done for free. You know, there's always some form of investment to get things moving. Um, so it took a couple of years of me figuring out how to make actually make this happen from a financial perspective, from a marketing perspective, uh, from a core mission perspective. Where was this business opportunity really um, uh, going to land? And so when I felt in my gut, and you're right, it's kind of gut timing. 
there's no science to this. There's no formula for this. This is you feel it's the right time, you pull the trigger on it, and you find a way to make it happen. Um, so it has been a couple of years of building, and I guess a piece of advice is, you know, it's very rare to have something that hits immediately. It does take some hard work, um, some sacrifice and some commitment to get something moving because it, it isn't immediate and yeah. you've got to be prepared for that. And I think, you know, if you do hit it quickly, that's the exception, not the rule. It doesn't usually happen that quickly. So you have yeah. to be prepared to sacrifice and invest time and sometimes, you know, yeah. money. I feel like, I feel like, you know, I mean, from my perspective, where we are, it's, and I had this conversation, I can't remember with who, I said, you know, the last 30 years of my life were to get to this moment, you know, with the brand we're building. So, like, even though we started a company, it, that still wasn't it. Like, until we got to this, you know, to Procurement Con and BizCon, I, I forget who I said to, but I said I've been working 30 years to get here. Right. You know, like, culminating all that knowledge, all those experiences. It's almost like saying it's take in 30 years to become an overnight success yeah so, you know, it, 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 it's that kind of thing you know it takes time to get to where you are but when it hits it could literally happen quickly yeah so you know i feel i'm in a very early phase of what i'm doing i'm not you know actually one of the things that i would like to think um about this series that we're, we're, we're doing is I want to continue to give updates over time. You mean of, with BizTalk? With BizTalk. Oh, you know, okay. I, I don't think I can impart all of the wisdom. I, I'm learning a lot myself, you know, to be honest. I'd like to think that maybe over a series of BizTalks, I can tell my story as it unfolds nice and as i do that those lessons will become available to the audience and maybe they'll get you're gonna some... end up having to grow the long beard and sit there we're gonna have to get you the robes and stuff and we're gonna have to sage say get you kill the sage <laughs> <I'm just laughs> yeah but no that's uh... Uh, unedited we'll leave the phone in there <laughs> Some mm. things you can't do outside when you're on location. You can't change it. Yeah, we'll cut that. Oh, no, no, no. This is raw and unfiltered, man. Oh, oh, all right, right. Man. Let's keep going. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> so they got some pastries up there, too, they put out for us, uh, very nice. which is nice. So I'm eyeing those up. But um, so tell us, talk to me. Um, and again, you know, I want you to kind of direct the conversation, you know, what you feel, whether it's a new business owner or a seasoned business owner, sort of needs to know, like, I mean, because even seasoned pros run up against problems, hmm. you know, um, you know, so it's, it's definitely worth knowing that sometimes things never end up where you think they're going to end up. <laughs> and I think, you know, there, there's definitely, um, a sense that you've got to adapt because even with my idea of where I want my company to be, I can see it being pulled in other directions. Yeah. And that's a real challenge because if you're not focused, you lose your, your, you know, your eyes not on the prize and you may get, you know, too distracted from your goals. So it is important to have a clear vision, address that vision, a target that vision, but also be open to modifying your strategy because, you know, things do change they and do. new things open up. And when you go and talk to people, um, they give you invaluable insights in, into things you've never thought about that you think that's an even bigger market or a bigger opportunity. I have something that could potentially address that opportunity. So, being a little bit flexible is, is key. Um, I think the other important lesson, and I think everybody says this, and, and it really is true, you got to think about what problem you're solving. 
if you're not solving a problem, you do not have a product or a market or a service. That's brilliant. You have to address a core problem. Okay. And once you identify that problem, who else is addressing that problem and what are their deficiencies and what can you do better is the next step in your thought process. So I'm not going to say that I follow that you know, to the letter, but I do keep it in mind constantly. It's, it's what, are, what is my unique core value that I'm bringing to this market? How am I addressing it? How am I better than the competition? And you know, we haven't talked about ClickSuite in any detail, but um, I, I like to think that my thinking is focused on how am I solving problems? Right. Because unless you're doing that, nobody, nobody will pay money by your service unless you're solving their problems. Yeah, so I think your guy is coming in. Um, we'll get in there. Don't be a backseat director. <laughs> We're getting there. But he wants to be on multiple episodes, so I might have to make him work for it. So talk to yeah. us about what ClickSuite is. Yeah, so just to to give some context about what I'm trying to do, I felt there was a problem to solve in the space of small clubs associations where they had a membership that they needed to improve communication and deliver their services, whether it be events or uh, news or um, whatever that association or club was uh, focused on, I felt there was a gap in a platform that delivered that efficiently in a way that was consumable by the end user on their phone, um, et cetera. So I said about trying to solve that problem, looking at other solutions, they felt antiquated. They felt um, not designed for today's world of, you know, convenience. I just felt that they were not hitting the target. And I also felt that artificial intelligence wasn't being leveraged in those uh, scenarios. And I feel I can bring AI into that uh, uh, mix to deliver even greater value. So that's kind of my, my core concept, deliver a platform to an audience, whether it be a group, uh, an association, etc that want to better manage service and deliver um, uh, information to their audience. And that's really the, the, the basic concept. Yeah, that's, and, and that's a great sales pitch. Awesome job. But I'm going to tell you what I feel like you're doing that. I don't think any, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel this because I'm experiencing it. So when we partnered with you, you mm -hmm. had this platform. We said, let's jump in with you because you were early and we felt we can grow with you. And then what surprised us more than anything else was that every time we had a question, a concern, and ask, it ended up on your roadmap. Mm. It ended up on your roadmap. None of these other ticketing companies are doing that with their clients, saying, listening to their clients. And that's huge. That's huge because, you know, as we grow, you know, we don't want to have to leave a platform because we've outgrown it. The platform needs to grow with us. And let's be real here. And we've had this conversation. Mm. I'm not going to drop names of what companies. But, you know, Vembrite, oh, sorry to say. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, like there's no growth for us with that. Yeah. You know, with an agency like any of them, actually, because we've looked at them all. So, you know, uh, Kanani and I call you and we say this and we want that. And then it's on your roadmap. And then you're giving us updates. And that I think is huge for any small business that needs a service like you, that you're offering um, because that's collaboration and that's the future. Always I love that you said that. And uh, I do appreciate that feedback because it's really good for me. It's, it validates a little bit of what, how I approach business, which is to have a bit more of a personal connection. Now, as the company grows, you know, I, I would hope to maintain 
in some for, form or fashion that kind of personal element. But I do agree that certain platforms today, it's use it or lose it because you, if they're not, they're not as flexible. No. Um, and, and I know that that is important, especially in the early stages and especially as we collaborate, my thinking is I need to make you successful. Right. I need to think things through. Not to say, so this goes back to the previous conversation about, you know, you, you can't be pulled in too many directions. You've got to stay focused. But when somebody asks me for something, when you ask me for something, I think about how do I make this incorporate it, incorporate it in a way that isn't just for BICP, but for everybody. Yeah. So I will make it useful to everybody. And I, I you know, and I, and I guess that. that's not, I guess that's not unique, but, um, I, you know, it's important for me to make sure that I take your needs into cons consideration yeah. and to, Think about your success. Hey, Mark, what did we call that in the olden days? Wasn't that like customer service? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was like, like customer service, right? Basically. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I can say this before we wrap up is, um, you know, we've brought things to the table to you and you did think them through. You didn't just jump and go, yeah, this is great and it's only for us. You did come back and give us the reasonings why this might not make sense. So not only did you guide us for for you, you guide us for us. You you, you got guided us. You know what I mean? And saying, do you really think this is the route you need to take? Would this work? So you you helped us because we did our round of pros and cons and ideas, but we didn't hit all the beats. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you brought some more to the table, which helped us. And then of course on the other side of that, you put things on your roadmap to make happen for us. So I think you know. I think that's good advice for any small business to consider. We understand that not every small business is going to be able to accommodate every customer and we get that, but there's definitely that there's, I think there's a balance in there somewhere. Yeah, there definitely is a balance because, you know, as you say, you, you can't be everything to everybody, but you have to focus on what's key and important. You know, you could take me down a path that is totally not, um, sensible for my company and it's my role to talk to you and say well do you really want to do that right here's some alternative ways of doing that that might be more yeah. uh beneficial to both of us um so yeah i mean it's yeah i, th I think i think that you know i want to tell a story i want it to unfold over time i don't have all the answers i'm hoping that i will uncover more answers as I continue this journey and I'm very excited to share it with your yeah. audience over time and maybe, you Well, know. hopefully having a story to follow builds our audience, right? I'm hoping. So yeah. that people say, oh, what, you know, the episode of Dirk and ClickSuite is on, where are they in their journey? We'd be happy to do that. Yeah. And, I, and that I, helps us build the office, uh, um, the great. brand. That'd be great. So uh, again, click suite, C L I Q S U I T E dot com. Right? Got it right? You got it right. Got it right. So if you are a small business, and you don't have to be a small business, so if you're an agency, if you're uh, a local chamber of commerce, if you are um, a not for profit, as a matter of fact, you have a not for profit right here in town, right? Yeah, I have several not for profits. I have. Um um, marketing agency, uh, yourself. I have, um, uh, actually click suite was used during an election campaign the last couple of weeks. Okay. So as a platform, it's very adaptable to an environment. Okay. Just depends how you decide to use it. So again, you know, you don't have to be a small business producing events. You don't have to be an event producer. You can be a lot of things and the platform is beneficial. So, uh, and, and I think key in today's economy, you have to weigh it too. You have to say, do I need the giant platform to help me get through because they offer X, Y, Z, or do I need really a small business owner like me who understands the journey I'm on? Because the truth is, is a lot of these big brands and corporations have forgotten their journey. I mean, I and, that, that, I, and I hate to say it, but it's true. You know, they're, they're, they're behind the iron curtain or the veil or whatever, like the Wizard of Oz, you know what I mean? 
hiding and they've forgotten your journey. So, yeah. guys, check out Click Suite. Not because we're partnered with them, but because they are an amazing. Dirk here is 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 amazing. His developers are amazing. They work well with our developers. Uh, so check them out and reach out to Dirk to uh, through Click Suite and ask him questions. He is a giving entrepreneur. He really is. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and we're out.